Hello, I'm Lisa Vanderpump and I'm here with BuzzFeed and I'm ready to talk about my first. My first job was in a sweet shop when I was about 14. I used to work there after school and I used to work there on Saturdays and I cannot believe that the owner of the sweet shop, because I used to eat most of the sweets, um, would actually let me have the keys and open up the shop on my own. And so I would be sitting there selling candy, or as you call it, we call it sweets, and magazines, yeah, on my own. I've had a job since I was 13, 14. I'm very industrious. I bought my own apartment with no help of my parents by the time I was 19. Well, I think I was in London, and I think it was a car phone rather than a cell phone. I remember Ken had one, one of those heavy weights that you had to carry around which look ridiculous now when you think about it but I had a car phone it was such a luxury and I can't believe that we ever used to survive without phones but yes it was in a, I had a Mercedes 450 SL probably about 22 and I had a car phone but you know what I did used to have a little pink Motorola I still miss that phone a little fat pink Motorola I wish I could get that back it's kind of embarrassing to say now because I don't really find him attractive at all. Well, maybe if I met him, but it was David Cassidy. But there didn't seem to be many celebrities, but it was like we were in England. It was either Donny Osmond or David Cassidy. Those were the two choices. My first dog was a uh, Samoyed and I got it as soon as I left home and her name was Velvet. Oh no, my first car I bought when I was 16 I was too young to drive. I bought it for $400. It was a Triumph Herald. And again, I was pretty industrious and had a good work ethic. So I bought it on my own. My parents didn't spoil us at all. They didn't buy us anything like that. I ended up selling it and buying a Mini Cooper S, which is kind of cool now. At the time, everybody had minis. But yeah, I had a little white mini. I used to tear around London. I used to think I was like driving on a racing track. Thank God I'm still alive. No idea how I survived that in London. Well, when I met Ken, he had a wine bar restaurant called Corks in South Kensington. So I guess that'd be my first when I met him when I was 21. They were a pretty, you know, gregarious bunch. That's what they were like. It was Hollywood and they were trying to make it in Hollywood. They grew on me. I would see them when I'd go into the restaurant. Stacy, Kristen, Sandville worked in Villa Blanca and came over to Sir. Kristen was dating Sandoval. Stasi was with Jax, who didn't come work for me till later. And I think being at a restaurant was just basically a stepping stone. And sometimes they acted like that. It wasn't their career choice, let's put it that way. My first date might have been at a party with somebody who actually turned out to be gay, which is rather disappointing. I hope it wasn't me that persuaded them. My first date with Ken, I met him through my brother. He'd known my brother for quite a long time. My first date with Ken was in a restaurant called San Frediano. He'd asked me out prior to that and I'd said no. And he ended up coming to my apartment to see me. He said, I'm taking you out for dinner. We went to a place, a very famous restaurant in South Kensington. It was almost love at first sight. But remember, I got engaged after six weeks and married within three months. I think it was in New York, Camille and, and Kyle were fighting and it was just so intense. I remember thinking, what the hell am I doing here? I've got to get out of here. This is not a world I want to be in. And they were fighting and she said, you're such a f***ing liar, Camille. I was like, oh my God. That's when it took a bit of a turn for me. And I went to bed and I called Ken in tears saying, I can't do this, they're crazy. I was right, actually. Well, there's so much advice I'd given aspiring. I mean, it's a very difficult job. You've really got to love what you do because it's all ours that God sends. And I think really pay attention to the ambience as much as the food. Make sure that the surroundings is really as important as the food. That's one of the key things of our success. I remember when I went to New York and Real Housewives had just come out and I was going into one of the news buildings in New York. The show had literally just come out and suddenly Anderson Cooper turned around to me. Of course, he's very close to Andy Cohen, but I didn't know that at the time. He said, 
I am such a big fan. And I thought, hold on, you're like a war hero and a war correspondent, and I'm an idiot, and you're telling me you're a fan of mine? I like this. <laughs> it was just the funniest thing. It was Anderson Cooper, it was 10 years ago. He was known for being, you know, in the front line and kind of always like ducking bullets. And there he was telling me, this woman that had appeared on reality television that he was a fan. So that was kind of pretty amazing. The first time I knew I was famous is when I was in Fred Siegel's and I was having lunch and I'd been on the show about a couple of years and I went outside and they were taking pictures and I was just like, oh my God, who's here? And they were like, you are. I was like, what, really? That was, yeah, the beginning of something. That really was, that was the funniest thing. I had no idea that anybody would show up to take my picture. Oh God, there was um, the Real Housewives Beverly Hills that they said, I'm a liar, I'm a pimp, I'm a arms dealer, Max isn't my son, I ran a brothel, um, what was it? There was loads of things they said about me in the second season. Everything negative, yeah, they threw at me in the second season. I was just like, am I even going to dignify any, any of this with a response? They said that I would go around selling arms on my boat in the south of France. Like, what, where do these people come from? <laughs> Probably Friends. I don't know because I don't watch a lot of television, but every time I watch that show, I feel like I've never seen it before. So I don't understand where all these episodes keep coming from. Well, it's a beautiful, poignant show that tells the story of these, you know, incredible animals getting their second chance at life. It's also a human story as well about making the right match. I'm just passionate about this project because Band Pump Dogs has been open for five years now and I have to thank my staff for that. Dr. John Sessa has gone above and beyond. We've just loved this show, you know, just seeing it shine a light on rescue, seeing so many of these gorgeous furry people getting their second chance at life. And it's a heartwarming, emotionally provocative show. I think people are going to love it. Well, thank you so much, BuzzFeed. Please watch Overserved on E! And watch Vanderpump Dogs, which is streaming on Peacock. Thank you so much.